Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. And since the Constitution uh, has something to say about what you've just been chanting, I'll assume that you're suggesting that I live four more years. <laughs> well, I thank all of you. Thank you, Senator Andrews, for that kind of introduction. And special thanks to the University of North Dakota Marching Band and the other bands that are here today. You, you make beautiful music. Before I, incidentally, of course, all the signs and the, some of them are welcome to me and I was told when I was a pledge at Eureka College that Talk App Epsilon was a fraternity for life. I'm glad my frotters are, are here. But before I start my prepared remarks, I want to make one brief announcement. The danger of toxic wastes is perhaps the most pressing environmental problem confronting our country. And on my way here today, on Air Force One, I signed the Superfund legislation to accelerate the cleanup of the nation's hazardous waste sites. The, the, bill's, the bill's financing has real concerns, but the health and safety of Americans is among the highest priorities of government, so we will not allow an interruption in the cleanup process. It's great to be here with our congressional candidate, Seaver Vinji. <laughs> Public Service Commissioner, Leo Reinbold. <laughs> Labor Commissioner, Ike Hagan. This, this is what I call North Dakota's Republican A-Team. Now, I want to say hi to the students of Thompson High School. Sorry I couldn't accept your invitation, but I hope that this makes up for it. And also to the young astronauts who are here today. I just said goodbye yesterday to 10 of their number who are now on their way to the Soviet Union in an exchange with their young astronauts who will be coming here visiting our country. And, uh, I can't help but see all the young people who are here in the audience, and I have a special message to you from my roommate. <laughs> it's the same message that Carl Eller told you earlier. When it comes to drugs, please, for yourselves, your families, for your future in your country, just say no. I want to tell you, Nancy and Carl have impressed me so much with that that the other day, even though it didn't have to do with drugs, why, I said no. <laughs> but it's wonderful to be here in North Dakota. You know, as I said to my staff when we were taking off in Air Force One, it's great to be out of Washington and back to where the real people are. I, I wish I could stay longer, but as you know, Congress is in session, 
and with Mark Andrews here with me, well, I don't think we should be leaving the rest of them alone too long. Uh, now, now, I'm not reflecting on the Congress as an institution, but most of us must be aware that there are some elements there that need watching. I think I can describe them best by a story about three fellows that came out of a building, found they'd locked themselves out of their car. And one of them said, get me a wire coat hanger. I can straighten it out and I can get the... And the second one said, you can't do that. Somebody will see us out here doing that and think we're stealing the car. And the third one said, well, we better do something pretty quick because it's starting to rain and the top's down. great to be back on the campaign trail. It almost feels like 1980 all over again. You know, you know, you know, you know President Clifford of University of North Dakota has a favorite joke about North Dakota. In this state, he says everything is backward. The rivers run north and the Irish vote Republican. This is one Irishman who's voting Republican in 1986. And I have to feel that the people of this state are going to do the same. They're going to send Mark Andrews back to Washington as United States Senator from the great state of North Dakota. You know, believe me, we need Mark Andrews in the U.S. Senate to keep America on the track of growth, prosperity, and freedom. It's no secret that there are still some folks in Washington who want to put America full speed in reverse, back to the days when big government, taxes, and inflation were destroying our economy, and military weakness made America a punching bag for nickel and dime dictators around the world. America used to wear a kick me sign around its neck. But we threw that sign away. And now it... <laughs> now it reads, don't tread on me. It's important, it's important to remember those days five and a half years ago because the tax and spend crew is still lurking in the shadows just waiting for a second chance. The liberal leadership of the Democratic Party hasn't changed. They're just itching to raise your taxes and rev up that inflationary money machine. The Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, spoke for them all last year when he said, and I quote, should the American people pay through the nose by taxation? The answer is yes. Well, come November, the American people will be going to the polls and saying loud and clear, sorry, Tip, the answer is no. You know, you know, the truth is, the liberal Democrat leaders never met a tax they didn't like. And when it comes to spending your hard-earned money, those liberals act like they've got your credit card in their pocket, and believe me, they never leave home without it. <laughs>